It's Charter California Edition. I'm Brad Palmer. you got to stick around for this interview. We are speaking with Jason Poo. He is the new mayor of the city of San Gabriel. You may have heard they had a tie in a recent election, a bona fide tie. And we can't even imagine where we, where we go from here with a tie, but we're going to talk about it with the mayor. So you've been in office yeah. all of a few days, and what happens? Well, I mean, we knew about this even before, exactly. Your before I became installed as mayor. Um, it's an exceedingly rare situation, an exact tie, even after provisional ballots were cast right. or uh, were counted, and even right. after the late VBMs were counted, because under state law now, right. if a vote-by-mail ballot is postmarked by the election date and received within three days of that date um, by the city clerk's office, we still count that ballot. So, so we knew, even just from the election day results and, and the earlier vote-by-mail uh -huh. results, that it was going to be very close. It was only it was only a separation of 23 votes at that time. On election night, right. there was 23 votes separating. Let me explain. San Gabriel City Council, three candidates, top two win. Correct. The first place <clears throat> finisher came in pretty strong with right. about 1,747 votes. Correct. It was that tie between second and third place. We have Julie Costanzo, who is the incumbent, mm -hmm. Denise Menchaca, who had been on the school board. Right. They are tied right now. Dead even tie. Yeah, so 23 votes. Who was ahead on election night? On election night, Julie Costanzo was, so was ahead. So the incumbent was ahead, mm -hmm. but then with, like you said, the provisionals, and the vote by mails that came in that can be counted now, right. there's an exact tie, 1,276 votes. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so normally I have heard situations where there is a recount and one candidate will pick up the cost of the recount, usually the candidate that is behind. Right. Exactly. There's no candidate that's behind right now. Exactly. So did the candidates talk about splitting the, the, the cost of the recount? What happened? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I think there was a lot of talk within the community generally. Mm -hmm. And uh, any candidate or any voter actually can request a recount. Um, and what happens in the case of it being a voter? I mean, are we going to ask the voter to right. come out of pocket to pay for right. the cost? In this case, the request for recount that we received was signed by about 25 community members or so, including the two candidates. I understand. And, the, and that request also requested that the city pay for the cost of the recount um, as a further service, you know, a, a sort of like right. to ensure the accurateness and transparency of this process. We prefer to have the city take on the cost of this, uh, of this process um, so there's no presumption or sure. perception that whichever side's paying for it will, you know, that the process will favor right. whichever side is paying for it. And the cost that at the end of the day we're talking about uh, for the city is uh, $1,200, uh, 1200 I think $1,240. It's not a huge amount of money as I understand uh, it. I think we probably spent more money right. uh, in discussing it at, at our <laughs> right. council meeting right. than, than the thing itself will cost. It's so. interesting. I recently covered another very close race yeah. in the city of Pismo Beach in mm -hmm. San Luis Obispo County. It was a mayor's race, directly elected mayor, the distinction was two votes. Wow, yeah. The incumbent was ahead by two votes. What happened in that case, I found it fascinating. So the challenger needed to raise the money and he went on a Kickstarter campaign. <laughs> he was a, he was short a bit, and the incumbent wound up kicking in oh. the the remainder. Interesting, yeah. A, yeah, which was an interesting approach. In the end, the incumbent did win by two votes. Interesting. And so there was no change. Yeah, and and it's allowable under the elections code uh, if our uh, city clerk, our city, our right. elections official. Um, decides to do the recount for the city to incur right. that cost. So, so it's all above board. There's no, you know, either. The, I think the most common situation is when the candidate who's behind and, right. and is requesting the recount pays for that recount. In this tie situation, um, you know, we just thought it was the right thing to do in the interest of fairness and integrity. So, yeah, I cover San Luis Obispo. So, uh, another situation I remember there was a community services district. That's a, a common uh, type of. It's not quite a city council, but it's below a city council mm. uh, where there was a tie. Okay. Uh, a few years ago. And in that case, what the rec clerk recorder did was had them pull cards. Interesting. And if, there had, if they had both pulled the same card, she was then ready to go to suits, <laughs> pursuant to pinochle rules. Interesting. And so there's a lot of different ways to do it. Yeah. But let's talk about the recount and then what happens if the tie right. remains. Right. How do you plan to engage in the recount? We have a... Uh, um, 
an elections consultant that okay. helps us to do our uh, city elections, which the city of San Gabriel does conduct its sure. own elections. Um, they assisted us through this entire process dur during the campaign's uh, season mm -hmm. and, and up to um, and including election day. Um, they will be assisting um, our staff uh, on during doing the recount on uh, Thursday, right. uh, March 19th. And which this program will air after that fact. We'll put the results on the screen. Okay, the okay. The key, yeah, though, is um, let me ask you, is it going to be a manual recount? Is it going to be a machine recount? How will it work? It's going to be a manual recount. Um, so... And I honestly have no idea what to right. expect, what, whether it's going to return the same results as the machine count or not. You know, it's possible that maybe there are indentations or markings on the yeah, ballot. Yeah, and let me ask you, with regard to your ballots, yeah. um, do you color in the bubble or do you push? It's, I believe if you go to the actual polling place, yeah. you have that little ink pen thing that kind of, and you have to like put it in the little circle and okay. you push down and it makes a mark. Okay. I guess it's possible you might make a mark that's too light right. or, or maybe just a small mark that the machine but might not But it's not, not the hanging chads that we saw from Florida yeah. 2000. Thank goodness. <laughs> okay. So let's just say for argument's sake, we finish the recount. It is a tie. Yeah. What does the law say about ties? And is it state law? Is it San Gabriel City Code? So this is an interesting thing. You know, I've been explaining this to community members. Right. We are a general law city, which okay. means we follow right. the government code and the elections code of the state of California. Charter cities like the city of L.A., city right. of Pasadena, um, they have their own rules. It's like they have their own charter, meaning right. their own constitution. They may in that charter have sure. different rules for these kinds of things. But under the elections code, then uh, if you had a process, um, an ordinance in place before the election that specified how you're going to deal with ties, ah. you could follow that process. Okay. For instance, uh, a runoff. Right. You know, um, that's probably the, the, right. the question that we feel the most. Why can't we just have a runoff? Why can't you just have a runoff? That's a great question. Well, we didn't, we didn't, we don't have an ordinance like that in place. Um, some cities, when they pass their resolutions to sort of uh, authorize the con conducting of the elections right. process, also pass with that. If uh, it's a tie, if it's a tie, we'll go we to will, runoff. we will do, or what they will do. You know, who, but Are most of the time they run off. Looking towards that after this is over. After <laughs> this is over, you know, it might not be a bad just sort right. of savings clause. Okay. You know, just sure, in sure. case. I hope it doesn't happen again. But at your meeting when you you were installed as mayor, did Correct. you make a decision as to what you will do if the tie remains? Exactly. So under state law, um, if it, if there's a still tie, it has to be the tie needs to be broken by a random process. And that's interesting. Random by a lot. Random process okay. by a lot. Um, most often, you hear of the flipping of the coin. Right. I've heard of uh, a hand of seven card stud, all right. all all cards up. <laughs> Drawing straws. Drawing it could straws. Be a, but what did you decide? Or we, did you decide? We did decide, and we decided um, to use a process that the um, is already used in our elections okay. um, system, which is the process that the LA County a registrar uses to determine the order of names on the ballot. Mm. So they already use this process. It's a public process, and okay. you know. Um, um, where the names or, or letters are put into a, a, sort of like film canisters. Film canisters. And then they're okay. put into what looks like a raffle barrel. Right. You know, it's kind of, uh, yeah. you know, spun and mixed up and then, you know, somebody picks them up. I have a stomach thinking about it because it's nerve wracking. I can't imagine. It's nerve wracking, but I feel like if we have a process that has um, already something to do with our election system, that, you yeah. know, that gives us the maximum amount of sort of credibility and sort of maybe finality, integrity of results. Did you ever think on your first day as mayor you'd have to deal with issues like a tie election? He no. is the mayor of San Gabriel. <laughs> His name is Jason Poo. My name is Brad Palmer. It's, it's Charter California Edition. Welcome back. Wanted to give you a quick update since we taped our interview with San Gabriel Mayor Jason Poo. The recount has concluded. Four votes were found that had not been tallied. Three went to the incumbent, Julie Costanzo. One went to the challenger, Denise Menchaca. As a result, incumbent Julie Costanzo is reelected to the San Gabriel City Council by two votes. Thanks for watching us. It's Charter California Edition.